The following is a Joel Mahalik production. On November 13th, Felix Unger was asked to remove himself from his place of residence. That request came from his wife. She asked him to leave because he wouldn't listen to the Joel Mahalik show. Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to the Joel Mahalik Show. I am the man, the myth, the living legend, Joel Mahalik, and I am so fortunate and lucky to be in the same studio across from the sexiest woman in radio, the lovely Sharon. The lovely Sharon. How'd you like that intro? I loved it. <laughs> welcome to the program, folks. Uh, we're uh, glad to be here. Let me tell you how you get a hold of us. We live at www.jmtalk.net on the web where you can listen to the program and enjoy uh, news posts and other things we have going on there. Plus, subscribe to the show, now available on Amazon Music. Uh, also, you can reach us on social media, face TikTok and Facebook at JM Talk, Instagram and Twitter at JM Talk Radio. You can also email us at joelmaholicradio at gmail.com. So that's the business of the show. Out of the way. Out of the way. Do you know what's significant about this this week's show a little bit? Uh, so No, because you never tell me what's going to well, happen. Part of, the, so. part, of the sh- part, part of the show is being shot on Friday the 13th. And yes. now that's not the significant part. But November 13th is. So let's check your memory. Not so much your memory, but let's just check. Let's see. Wow. You know my memory is for <laughs> shit, so. <laughs> November 13th. November 13th. Yes. Is a day in November. Yeah, is it? And it's after the 12th. Okay, so. And before the 14th. So I will just tell you. So if you listen closely to, we have a, we have a couple different intros to the program. And one of the intros is a parody that our good friend Barry Slinker helped me make of the Odd Couple theme. And f- today, the 13th of November, is when uh, Felix Unger's wife threw him out of the apartment. Oh. <laughs> and I would know that. Why? I don't know. I just thought it was interesting <laughs> trivia to bring out for people that might be... That maybe listen to the <laughs> intro going November thirteenth. Oh wow, today's November third or this weekend. Oh, of course, wow. this show will drop on the fifteenth, but you know, right, it's, but it's, still, it's, it's recorded, yeah. you know, intermittently. Wow. Yes, November thirteenth. That's as interesting to me as paint drying. Oh yeah, you know, I knew you were going to say paint drying, and really, I don't need the <laughs> insults. <laughs> so, anyway. Um, Lots to talk about, I think, and one of them is that I wanted to bring up, and I bring this up because you know we're we're heading into the holidays, yeah. Um, which you know, before kicking we, and screaming at this point, <laughs> right? Before we get to this part about the holidays, or not that that's connected, but it is. But wow! So there's a second or third, depending on how you look at it, uh, rage of coronavirus, and so and isn't it? It's just in time to potentially affect everyone's holiday i know travel is... bans and don't do this and you know thanksgiving's out the window right well listen it could be worse we could be living in california where you where the governor of california actually in his list of things you're not allowed to do for thanksgiving includes you're not allowed to sing what you were i i as Why god is my you not witness be allowed to sing? you're not allowed to sing when you're in your your Thanksgiving small your small allowable Thanksgiving group, you're not allowed wow, to sing. Wow, you're not allowed to sing. <laughs> well, I just don't yeah. get it. I don't understand. What? Yeah, yeah. Mm. But you know, uh, but everybody. It, it's funny because last week I listened to our governor, quote unquote. Uh huh. Talk about Thanksgiving here, and it, it's like anywhere else. It's like they just don't want you doing anything. Yeah. For Thanksgiving, small small groups. 
And I'm sure that all the SWAT teams have been notified to make sure that if anybody buys a turkey that feeds more than 10 people, they're supposed to break down that house and, and arrest everybody. I don't know. I know. What? I'm carried away, but... But seriously, oh like, goodness. you know, are they, are they, are, did they tell the farmers to make sure that no turkeys are over X amount of pounds? I don't know. Like, I'm just, it's weird. Like, I've never seen something like this. And it makes me wonder, like, months ago we talked about how the pandemic, how we're wearing masks. And if you look at China, China always wears masks. They've always worn masks when they're out and about. And oh, yeah. And it's like a normal for them. Right. Is it normal for them to just be told how to conduct themselves on holidays? You know, speaking of that, I was thinking, back, you know, back years ago when you would see, I think it was the bird flu or SARS or something came out in China. You saw everybody wearing face masks. And I, I think I may have even said this. That God forbid a day come where United States has to be like that. Yeah, because the problem here is, uh, is we have a lot of people, too many people that feel they're too good to do that. Yeah, like we do have a serious yeah. issue here, and we're not discounting that when we make light of what's oh, going on. Because yeah, yeah, you know, not that we do huge Thanksgiving or Christmas celebrations, but no, we I don't. mean, I feel for the other people that do and are being told no now. Yeah. Like, our very best friends have a massive gathering for yeah, both those holidays. Yes. And I re- I didn't even check in yet to see what they're doing. But this close to Thanksgiving, I haven't seen the notices either. Because we're invited every year, although every year, we have right. other commitments. Right. But I haven't seen the notice for Thanksgiving. So they probably are not doing that. And in fact, we yes, haven't seen these friends so. of ours since pre-pandemic. I know. Like, we're and waiting for it to end. We're jonesing. Yeah, we're jonesing. Jonesing bad. So, um, but we just have people here... In in the, in America, the, they're too good to be told to wear a mask, right? You know, and um, I'm actually to the point where I'm used to it when I go out, you know, and that's why I said but, before, are we going to wind up like China, and is this going to be the new norm, just wearing a mask when you go out? Yeah, exactly. Because exactly. At, so, at some point it was for them, like you said when they when birds were yeah. whichever one it was, they never stopped wearing a mask, like right, and and you know. Pre-pandemic, we um, would see people, Chinese around the year, still wearing their masks. Yeah. I, You know, at least I did. Yeah. No, you're right. And because it's ingrained in them. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's really crazy to, to um, live in the times that we're living in. Yeah. It certainly is weird. Yep. So, anyway, so with this second wave, I mean, we have um, uh, our, our daughter's coming home from Chicago, and she has to take additional protocols before coming and before going back. Yeah. Because of this. Yeah. You know. And um, and here's the thing. I mean, before going back, she has to be tested and have a negative test. Right. And... So she can go back home, right? And or in other words, if she didn't have the test, she would have to quarantine for what twelve days? I think it's fourteen. Fourteen, okay. And um, other if if that's if she didn't do the test, she is doing the test, so she doesn't have to do that, right? Because she her job won't really allow her to quarantine for that long. At least in my mind, she right. hasn't said that, but in my mind, that's that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, it's weird. It it's is. a whole new thing. It's really weird. so. It's affecting families. They're trying to figure out how they're going to do the Thanksgiving thing and the Christmas thing, and um, and so just to throw a um, a wrench in the in the wheel and and crash the car. There's been an outbreak of E. coli infections in six different states so far reported of, guess what? Take, take a stab at what it is. Beef? Romaine lettuce again. What? Again. Oh, my God. Yes. So, um, uh, uh, last Tuesday, uh, reports five hospitalized, at least 12 people infected. Uh, the CDC notice is connected to a voluntary recall of packages of romaine lettuce sold under the name uh, Tamarua and Antle at Walmart stores. Yes. Wow. Yes. Uh, on November, uh, oh, they were distributed to 19 states and Puerto Rico. Um, Puerto Rico. Puerto 
Puerto, whatever. Puerto Rico. <laughs> the recall of Romaine lettuce was labeled with a pack date of 10 15 20 or 10 16 20. Um, so now here's the thing. Oh, and here's a picture of it. The nice picture. We'll make sure we put that up on the yes, Facebook. Yes, yes. Um, so the states listed in the outbreak. Now this is important folks. If you, if you're in the ge- geological area of the show, right? Uh, California, Illinois, Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and Virginia. Now, you know, of all the lettuces, I do fancy romaine more so than iceberg. I haven't had romaine in a while. Um, mm, no, I'm still an I know you don't like iceberg romaine. gal. I know you're an it's iceberg gal. It's not that gal. I don't like romaine. I like romaine in certain salads. Well, I'm starting to not like romaine anymore because romaine is a very bad boy. Yeah. You know, this is all the time. Yeah. So can I, but can I tell you something? Yeah, go ahead. You know what you never see on these recall lists? Jelly beans. Okay, so I don't know if it's a coincidence. What I'm saying is jelly beans don't give you E. coli, at least not as of yet. Right. Neither do Reese's peanut butter cups. Wow. <laughs> so, okay. Let's see where Joel's mind is. But the E. coli always affects things that are supposed to be better for you than the junk. Beef, lettuce, or, or salmonella. Yeah. Chicken, right. you know, pork, all this stuff. That you're supposed to be good for you mm-hmm. and winds up becoming poisonous in some form or fashion. Right. And I'm just saying, maybe if we just ate Halloween candy all year long, <laughs> we'd be all right. Ex- <laughs> we'd also have to widen doorways. Right. And- so, anyway, folks, so be on the lookout for that. We're going to put this up on the Facebook page. Um, and again, like I said, going into the holiday, just another right. thing because people do have salads and, and, you know, the traditional Thanksgiving meal is. Out the window or modified heavily, as I hear. Like in the last couple of years, I mean, even uh, uh, one of your girlfriends has had me make the mac and cheese crock pot that I do for their Thanksgiving there. Right. And I thought that was weird when I did that like two years ago, but now all I hear anymore is mac and cheese is a staple at everyone's Thanksgiving dinner. Now, you you know what else I hear for that people are saying that they're making for Thanksgiving coleslaw, potato salad, summer That's- foods. That is Toss a that summer foods. Summer foods. Yeah. Not Thanksgiving. Well, you know what? It's just like, you know, when and I... And that's what I want to scream when I hear <laughs> that. I'm like, no. It's just like when I was a mobile disc jockey. How wedding, traditional weddings started becoming twisted yeah. and turned and yeah. then out the window. Right. And we had a really big, long conversation last night with a friend of ours talking about nostalgia. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I call me old-fashioned or old soul, but... I like that old stuff. I like the way things were. I, so do I. So um, I, what I'm saying is, do you it. want crock pot mac and cheese with your turkey this year? <laughs> 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 we'll get this information out about uh, the romaine yeah. lettuce. You might want to remind that, that friend. <laughs> <laughs> Please, everybody, be safe uh, and uh, always keep an eye out. There are there are one or two really good websites. I think one is by the CDC, one is by the FDA that has recalls. And you should visit these sites often. Oh, absolutely. And keep an eye out for things yeah. because... We find this information out sometimes accidentally on Facebook. Right. And the Facebook algorithms and the timeline is a discussion for another show, which we may be having real soon. But anyway, so be safe uh, when you're shopping for holiday food. And remember, you're not allowed to have a turkey that feeds over 10. (laughs) Wow. So, anyway, what's the timing like? we got a couple minutes. Um, yeah, so I, as far as that is concerned, I okay. want to buy a 30-pound turkey just to see if they'll let me buy it. We're not buying a 30-pound turkey. I know. I'm just saying I want to. No. Why? Because, first of all, that would be expensive. Second of all, but see, what do we, not- when, we buy, when we buy a turkey that we think will feed just us, what do we wind up having? 10 pounds of leftovers that never get <laughs> eaten. And so it takes up room in a refrigerator until the refrigerator um, stinks, and then we throw it out into the trash that stinks. And then we got to drag that 10 pound bag out the back door into the barrel. I'm just saying. So, like, you just got real specific on me <laughs> and kind of like scared me a little bit. Well, I'm just painting a picture. Um, I know. I, I get you. I get you. Um, so, do you think we can get like a three pound turkey? No. How about two turkey breasts and call it a day? No. One for me and one for the rest of the family. No. <laughs> no. And I say that because I will have a traditional turkey dinner. 
Okay. Traditional. With the mac and cheese or not? <laughs> <laughs> no, no mac and cheese. <laughs> but it, it, it's just weird how these things have become staples. What are your traditions? We should have yes. asked on Facebook oh prior to the show. But we've been so busy with things, which one day we'll tell you what all this busy, busy, busy has been. And we do apologize, by the way. At least I do. For not... Oh, I don't. Uh, see, that's what I'm saying. I apologize for not <laughs> having a new kidding. drop last week. I'm just kidding, guys. <laughs> I really am. Uh, one of the reasons is, and I did say this on Facebook, is I keep re-injuring injuries because of this process we're going through, which we can't tell anybody about yet. But I've injured now my hip, my back, my sciatic, my shoulder, which I blew out before, is reblown. And so we're actually measuring for a traction bed now, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Just get it over with. <laughs> exactly. So um, why do you have the itchies? It, right here where my watch, where watch band, band was real close. Well, you remember when I had my Apple watch band like that, I broke out all over my wrist okay, until I I'm got not, my stainless steel but, band. Right, but I'm not breaking out. It's just because this was tight on my skin. Well, your watch band is dirty. Is that supposed it to be? Is, is that not. is that supposed to be gray or is it supposed to be white? Shut up! Leave me alone. <laughs> God. The nice thing about those bands is that you can take them off the I watch. I wash, wash them. them. I do. Do you? Okay. I do. Yeah. All right. So I'm just saying, stop judging me. Wow. Okay. So we got other stuff coming up on the show. We need to talk about cyberbullying. Uh, so we have to talk about that. Okay. Uh, when we come back from the break. Also, I have a bombshell story to drop on the lovely Sharon. I, yeah, th- this is going to be one of those times where I'm really glad that I didn't tell her what was on the program. Because <laughs> I got one to drop that she is going to drop her to the floor. Plus, we have a new Wombat this week. We have a new hero coming up this week. So we got a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff coming up uh, on the program. Awesome. So um, I know you need a drink, a stiff one. I do. <laughs> I do. <laughs> and if you don't, you will soon. <laughs> Uh, so we're going to um, get ready to do that, um, and we have to check on the alarm system. Yes. So we're going to take about 90 seconds, and we'll be back with more after this. This is New York Super Oldie Station, 920 WOM, The Apple, Brooklyn, New York. So I use my computer every day. I'm not even sure how I get along without it, but I wasn't prepared for a virus. A Trojan, they called it. One night I'm cruising along, and the next night I can't do anything. I was afraid it was going to cost me a fortune. Boy, was I surprised. They had me back up and running the same day I called them. I really like PC Tech Rescue, and you know what? My wallet likes them too. Are you troubled by computer problems? PC Tech Rescue should be your very next call. Whether the problem is viruses, hardware, software, or any other issue, they can diagnose your problem and have you back up and running fast. With more than 25 years of industry experience, you can be sure you are getting dependable and affordable service. Call today, 484-429-6061, or email us at pctechrescue at gmail.com. Welcome back, folks, to the program. It's the Joel Mahalik Show featuring the lovely Sharon. We're back from break, and uh, I wanted to put you into a little bit of the spotlight. Yes, you. Oh, um, <laughs> I'm sorry. And um, talk about um, Sensi because you got uh, one hell of a warmer going on in November. Oh, I And then do. the limited edition fireplace warmer coming out, or that's mm. out, getting ready to drop. Yeah. So, now, um, I mean, if you want to talk a minute or two about the warmers, and then, of course, we'll put the uh, website up on the Facebook page. Absolutely. Yes. So, um, November's warmer. Is the barn. The Christmas barn. Christmas barn. It is gorgeous. Guess what it is. It's nostalgic. Remember what I said in the first segment? It's nostalgic. I know, right? It's absolutely gorgeous. Um and and the scent of the month that comes with it is uh, something pomegranate, jeweled pomegranate, and it's really nice. It's Absolutely. got a nice holiday smell it to is, it. Ooh, it I really does. It really does. Um, I foresee <clears throat> both the warmer and the um the bars being sold out. Yeah, 
because they're that gorgeous. Um, you have to go to my website, sharonsense.sensi.us. Right, and we'll put that up on the Facebook yeah. page as well yeah, this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I, I got a first look at the fireplace warmer, the limited edition fireplace yes. warmer. Yes. <sighs> Gorgeous. Wow. I know, right? So it is nice and it would look really good. Like both of these pieces, more so the barn, would look good. Like if you're a train nut like I am and you like trains and Christmas villages I and know, stuff. Right? Would, that would make, that would look good in like, in your in a village. Town, yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, it is a little bigger than most scales, but if your village, I think our Dickens village is pretty close to the scale of that barn. So it right. would, right. you know, offset it. It would really go in there nice. Yeah. So anyway, um, yeah. So it was a momentary plug for you. In the yeah, CC thank and- <laughs> you. I certainly, I can certainly use the and did the what plugs. I, and did what I did. I caught you off guard. Uh, and you did. You caught me off guard because I had no idea. He was well, I can use talk. the plugs too. I can use some hair plugs up here. <laughs> <and around here. laughs> right. So anyway, um, I want to get to this topic of um, uh, cyberbullying. Right. This snuck up on me. Stop it, Molly. Molly is our alarm system. The internet's most famous <laughs> schnauzer. Get right. ready to bark. She is. Um, this came across uh, this past week, actually the week we took off, about cyberbullying. Now, as you know, schools are doing, a lot of schools are doing hybrid models of learning right now. Right. Some days in the classroom, some days on uh, Zoom. Right. Virtual. And if you don't want your child going to school, then they can participate all five days virtually. Here's the problem. Um... Obviously, Zoom has become the popular choice for holding meetings and for all this virtual learning since COVID-19 popped up. Um, Unfortunately, what they're finding out is this is also breeding a whole new breed of cyberbullying. Right. I mean, Zoom had its issues early on because there were a lot of people were uh, breaking into the meetings and, you know, uh, there were a lot of hacking going on inside of it. And Uh, and I thought that was all fixed, but recently strangers have been partaking in what's called Zoom bombing. Oh, come on. Okay, and this is where they disrupt these meetings in classrooms with hateful and inappropriate comments. And they even try to hack their way into the forms that are associated with the classes and the meetings. So whether you're holding educational classes or business meetings right. on Zoom, it is... Um, That's ridiculous. It's not... Yeah, it's not right to participate in this. Right. So Michigan Attorney General Dana Nessel and the U.S. Attorney Matthew Schneider issued an alert and warning to let users know about this video hijacking. Okay? They both emphasize that hijacking video meetings could lead to criminal charges, including fraudulent access to a computer or network or malicious use of electronic communications. Additionally, with so many students being homeschooled or um, on Zoom, 90,000 schools actually in 20 countries, some students who were cyber bullies before COVID-19 are finding a new place to, to bully again. And that that is ridiculous. It is very ridiculous. And first of all, um, being a non-cyber bully is, is a problem, you know, and um, and so... As I always say with technology, we go too far too fast. There's, mm-hmm. there's so many unknowns. And being in the business of technology, one of my primary jobs is to make sure make sure people are safe right. from this stuff from, yeah. and any of this stuff. But that's crazy. Um, I you know it to me. It, I, it comes back to the parenting. I think. I mean, I hate to say it, but yes, technology gives you the tools. To be an ass, but I think it comes back to the parents as you know, as the what are you doing or not doing that allows your son or daughter to partake in bullying other people, whether in person or cyber bullying now? Right. With the, you know. Well, uh, I my personal opinion um, is kids that do the bullying often have parents that do the bullying. I I would agree with that in most cases. In other words, um, if the parents are bullying this child, this child thinks, wow, it's okay to bully other people because I'm getting bullied by my parents. 
and they're not telling me not par- to do it. Or if a parent bullies other people, that's yeah, that, that, that is right, learning exactly. You know, the child sees that and goes, "Well, right. this is this is my upbringing." Right. This is this is what it is. Right. So, so yeah. So the the attitude has to change somewhere, and unfortunately, it's mm-hmm. it's not because I guess the last thing. And maybe wrongfully so. Maybe this is the wrong thought to have had. But I guess I figured that the last thing that we would see with us trying to utilize this new technology for this new frontier we're facing is to have people bullying other people. And it's not just the class. I mean, the, I, I think the classes. I think for me, that's that's really number one. Yeah. I mean, it's, because it sure. starts it starts at youth. Treat yeah. each other with respect, but also the fact that they're also zoom bombing. You know, uh, uh, so professional meetings, people trying to conduct business like this, like. And after what Zoom had gone through, you would think that they would have figured that out. Yeah, they would have upped their protocols. And, Something like that, yeah. you know. But so. Um, and like I say, it comes back to the parent, to the parenting, I'm, and I'm sorry to say that. And if if you're offended because I said that, then maybe you should look in a mirror. Sure. You know, because it to me, to me, if if you get offended by if you're offended by something or you take something personally, personally, yeah, then I th- then there's a problem there mm-hmm. that you're not recognizing. Right. And I think that's true in any case, even if you're an auto mechanic. And something's wrong with my car, and I say to you, you know, and I and I make some sort of statement to you right. that this happens all the time when I bring the car to you, right. and you take offense to that. Nine out of ten times, I think it's probably because you, you maybe should figure out what you're doing or not doing. Right. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. Um. So, and I'm just using that as one example. Right. So I do take it back to the parents, unfortunately, and I'm sorry if you feel that way, but I think uh, some of the tips that it came out and how uh, parents can minimize the risk of Zoom bullying um, is. First of all, you need to set clear expectations about digital behavior and online reputation. And that's in the cyber world. Yeah. If you change that around, that's still step one. Set clear expectations about the way you're to behave. Yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly. Uh, Educate your children about the effects of cyberbullying, posting hateful speech or comments, sexting and sharing uh, naked photos of themselves or others. Be clear about what content can be viewed or shared. Identify the apps appropriate for your teen's use, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's, it starts with the upbringing. And listen, this isn't a uh, help, self-help show on how to raise, know, how to right? raise your children. <laughs> um, but I'm, as, as somebody in technology that has to deal with this kind of news, right. I'm sickened by the fact that we have to um, deal with this. Right. Um, in, in and, this online and, world. And we have grandchildren that would concern us I, you know what? to have I to was, deal with it. I was just thinking that maybe um, I should ask our 14 year old granddaughter if this happens to her in her classroom. Right. If, it, if it's hitting that close to home. Right. You now, know? one of my clients out on the West Coast. Um, had uh, they they do online classes, and she works in a particular um a particular religious group of schools, and um they had a lot of issues with before this even came out about the education. So before it became big news, they had issues with people breaking into their classroom meetings to uh spew slurs at the students oh, you know and stuff like that because you know you're breaking in with video and audio this is yeah. i mean this is really uh disgusting you know yeah. and 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 i can't see how this is not illegal well that's what the attorney generals are saying there is yeah. legal consequences yeah. should you be found out exactly. you know what i mean that's the thing yeah, I and mean, that's one. Of the, that's one of the things that should be in that. I, it's probably in the tips. I think through all the tips. Yeah, there's a whole other page. Um, of the teacher children. Yeah, you could be held responsible. I could be held responsible because of you. And you know? the, the parent needs to be held right. responsible. But as you said for earlier, what their children does. But as you said prior, right. If this is the way the children learn from that kind of behavior exactly. from the adult, exactly. Then but, that's the that's the the small percentage part that will not do anything about it. Right. Exactly. And then they will cry about it when they are held responsible right. for these things. Well, what did I do? I didn't do anything. Right. And 
then they'll throw it back on their kids and and whatever and yeah so yeah so right um now it's imperative that if students being bullied uh, that they, first of all, do not respond to the negative posts. You don't want to give uh, fuel to the fire, so to speak. Uh, they should block the person who's posting a negative post and delete it. And if they're being threatened, then they should make sure that they tell their parents and their educators immediately. Right. Um, so now, as far as educators go, due to COVID-19, where everyone is asked to stay at home until further notice... Um, Uh, Zoom has a lot of security features designed to control online classrooms, prevent disruption, and help educators effectively teach remotely. They also offer educators resources in order to teach their students in private environments. So also, if you don't know this, if you're a teacher and you didn't know this and you're using Zoom, Zoom teachers can lock virtual classrooms. They can be locked, so only those that are not assigned to a virtual classroom can be locked out of it. Uh, once students have logged into the virtual classrooms, educa- educators should click the lock meeting button uh, by using the button, and that way no one else can get into or join the oh, session. there you go. Because a lot of cyber bullies just find way that they just, if the meeting's open, they're just joining an open meeting. Oh, yeah. And so educators yeah. should know, if you don't know already, that you can lock these meetings. They and do. that will help mitigate it, at least for that time. Right. Obviously, go back to the previous part. If a student is being bullied, whether it's on Zoom or or in person, you need to tell somebody. You, you yes. need to not put up with that because yes. let me tell you something. You may or may not know this. This country has anti-bullying laws. You can be held legally responsible. Yep. And and parents, listen up because you can be held civilly and financially responsible yep. for the actions of your child. Absolutely. So, and, and I mean, bullying. And plus, I'll kick your ass. Right. Oh my god! <laughs> uh, Go ahead, yeah. No, I, I was just going to say bullying. Um, it, it, look, I was bullied all through high school, all through elementary school, middle school, I high had a school. Bully, yeah. You know, and um, so it, it's personal to me when I see someone else or hear of someone else getting bullied. You know, don't, God forbid someone bullies my grandchildren. Yeah. God, God forbid. God help them. Yep. But yeah, I was bullied. I had a bully. Yep. And, you know. But my my bully was my entire class. I know. I was just getting ready to say, most of the people in my class for the eight years called yeah. me all kinds of names. So that, yep. that's a form of bullying. That, you know, just, no, just being looked at differently because of who you are. That's a form of bullying. That is bullying. It is bullying. Yeah, there's many forms of bullying. Uh, is no, bullying saying. is bullying. But, I'm sorry. But fortunately for us, we're fine, you and I. Yes. We yes. raised wonderful kids who are fine. Yes. And with the exception of a very rampaged four-year-old grand- grandson, <laughs> our grandkids are fine. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, um, okay. Now, with a few minutes left, the bombshell. So we're going to talk about sexuality. What? <laughs> Hold on. Don't drop, don't drop the security system. The security system has joined the show. Um. So, have you ever heard of ecosexuals? No. Or maybe ecosexuals. I'm not sure how they want to pronounce it. No. Okay. Ecosexual, e- ecosexuality can mean a variety of things. It can simply mean people who are passionate about using eco-friendly sex products, all the way to people who legitimately have sex with the earth. Like physically <laughs> the earth. I'm sorry. I am so sorry. It just popped out. I apologize. <laughs> Oh, According Lord. to sociologist <laughs> Dr. Jennifer Reed from the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, ecosexuals are at the point where sexology and ecology come together. Wow. Yes. Um, so, each how each person chooses to express their ecosexuality is, of course, entirely up to them. <sighs> Ways to express ecosexuality. As always, sexuality, ecosexuality, it's all a spectrum. One of the most common ways you will see ecosexuals expressing themselves is through the use of biodegradable, organic, and sustainable products and sex toys. Wow. Um, so this would include eco-friendly condoms, eco-friendly lube, all-natural sheets. What is an all-natural? I guess it's a sheet made out of leaves? I don't know. I don't know. Environmentally friendly sex toys, organic um, menstrual products. Ew. Yes. 
Uh, the other end of the spectrum are people who actually have sex with the earth or include it in their sexual experiences. Uh, for some ecosexuals, simply including the earth as their lover or part of their experiences isn't enough. They want to make a lifelong commitment to the planet. On Earth Day, this past April 25th, ecosexuals held a wedding ceremony where they were married to the earth. Okay, so like if you can't see the look on my face, <laughs> ew. <laughs> um, oh. The goal of marrying the earth is to reverse what has been one-sided a one-sided rela- relationship with the earth, where humans have been continuously been taken without giving anything back in return. Hmm. Uh, the marriage promotes an idea that, just as in marriage with two people, you have to put back in what you take out. They want to restore balance and love to the earth. Hmm. Yes. Um, so, so for many ecosexuals, their goal is to make environmentalism more fun and enticing to others. They want to encourage people to reconnect with both nature and their bodies, as well as to take a more active role in reversing climate change. Oh. Yeah. So if they love the earth, it'll reverse climate change. I guess that's one way of thinking of it, you know? <laughs> oh my goodness so I mean you know yes I think w- it's one thing to use eco-friendly products yeah but um, you know to love oh, the I mean, earth don't we have enough we have 57 different genders I mean don't we have enough genders and, and sexual orientations and you know uh, I guess not the list becomes because you can't discriminate and that's the other thing yeah so as weird as we may think this is Cannot discriminate. Nope. Cannot discriminate. But the list is getting a little long in the tooth. <laughs> you know? Um, I agree. So, I just informed, actually, our son-in-law, who is a gamer, yep. um, on Twitch, and I advised him last week that I saw a story come across the desk. I didn't bring it up on the show. <laughs> <laughs> he was talking about content and music, and I was sure. talking to him about how the RIIA yeah. wants to come after people on Twitch who may be violating using the wrong yeah. music. Right. And he said, well, you know, he bought a package. It's royalty-free. He's good to go. And I said, well, careful, though, because I just read a story that the new head of content, what's considered good enough or bad enough to get you in trouble, is a woman who, oddly enough, identifies as being a deer. Yes. What? Don't discriminate, the lovely Sharon. You cannot discriminate. Um, but I can have my own opinions. <laughs> okay. Like, like, like today, I I identify with someone who is run over by a bus. <laughs> so <laughs> tomorrow, I might identify as a toaster. I have no idea what the outcome will be. You know. But you cannot judge. <laughs> right. Okay. Wow. Well, guess what time of the show it is. <gasps> It's time time? for the lovely Sharon to say goodbye, Sharon. Goodbye, Sharon. So you're leaving and uh, probably taking the security system with you. Uh, And when I come back, I have uh, a new Wombat of the Week and a lot more. And possibly, if there's enough time, one last thing. So don't go anywhere, everybody. I'm coming back right after these messages. Uh, 90 seconds. America, your children have an amazing superpower. That's right. They can help save lives by simply washing their hands. Just 20 seconds of thorough hand washing after they've coughed or sneezed or been outside can help fight against the dastardly spread of germs. Armed with only soap and water and hands, your superhero can protect you, your family, and everyone out there in America land. Amazing. Find out more at coronavirus.gov. A message from the CDC and the Ad Council. Listen on the web, your phone, or your neighbor's internet connection. That wasn't very nice. This is Reality One. Welcome back to the program, folks. The Joel Mahalik Show featuring the lovely Sharon. Uh, welcome to uh, part three, uh, the third part. We have so many names for it. doesn't matter. I'm glad you came back with me. I'm glad you're here. And we can embark on this journey, you and I. And that's what we're going to do. So got some things to cover in this segment. 
Uh, namely, <clears throat> one of them is going to be the um, Honor Thy Hero segment, which is a really good one this week. And if you're new to the program, we're going to tell you how to do that. Um, also, um, what I realized is we got so carried away with some other stuff in the other segments with the lovely Sharon that we did not do the Wombat of the Week. So I get to do Wombat of the Week with you. And if time permits, we're going to do one last thing. So there you have it. So first, we'll go into, we'll do the one by the week, Honor Thy Heroes, and then the time permits, we'll do one last thing. And this is how you can play along if you want. If you want uh, to know what this is about, this is your first time listening to the program. First of all, thank you for listening. We hope you subscribe. Uh, but you can get involved in the one by the week, which is our crowning of a stupid person doing stupid stuff so you can send your story your link to a news story bona fide news story of stupid people doing stupid things and send it to us at joel radio at gmail.com you can also send it to us on facebook at jm talk as a pm so that's how you get that link to us and of course it'll go into i i, can't, I don't really say go into the run-in because the fact of the matter is Almost everyone who sends in a one battle week, it winds up on a show, even if it sits uh, in the list. Some weeks we do too, but not usually. So, but we get to them. So, um, without further ado, this week's one battle week is a doctor that was duped into buying a wish granting Aladdin's magic lamp. Yes, you heard that correctly. A doctor who was duped into buying a wish-granting Aladdin's magic lamp for over a quarter of a million dollars. Yes, a desire to get all his wishes fulfilled with a magic lamp, a la Aladdin, um, has landed a doctor in trouble. Uh, A doctor who just got back from India, from London, was cheated by two men who claimed to be tantrics, or sorcerers, and told him Aladdin Ka Chirag, or Chirag, Aladdin's magical lamp, sold it to him for a whopping 2.5 crore. And I don't even know if I'm saying that right. Uh, 2.5 crore, which is 0.3 million US dollars, promising it would fulfill all his wishes without the much needed hard work to translate them into reality, and that it would make him a billionaire. The incident took place in the North Indian city of Mirkut in the state of uh, Uttar Pradesh. The victim, Dr. Leek Khan, approached the police when he realized he'd been duped and filed a complaint against the cheats. The doctor claimed that the tantric and his friend, who would often make him see a jinn appearing from the magical lamp, but every time he asked if he could take the lamp home, they'd refuse, saying it might cause him harm. According to police reports, a patient visited the doctor, allegedly, uh, (laughs) I'm sorry, they messed the story up a little bit. All right, look, a doctor allegedly um, uh, met with an occultist whose name is uh, withheld. Uh, The tantric and one of his friends promised to make him a billionaire and give him magical powers courtesy of this magical lamp. The police have arrested the two accused while a search is on for a third. So, let's talk about this for a second. A doctor. A doctor who spends a lot of years in school learning to do really amazing things. So, you would think that, you know, hey, doctor, pretty smart, right? Believed that this lamp would grant him all his wishes. Okay? <laughs> um, and I think it's funny when he says... When he realized he's been duped, at what, at, like, how much of this BS do you have to buy into before you realize that you were duped? Because I don't know what it, I, I, I can't really speak for everybody, obviously. I can speak for myself. I think if anyone wanted to sell me a lamp that would grant me all my wishes, I think right about then, that would be about the time that I'm feeling duped into buying said lamp. Call me conservative, call me uh, cautious, whatever you want, but uh, I would be hard-pressed to think that I would ever meet anybody on the face of this globe who would be duped into spending a quarter of a million dollars on a lamp that grants wishes, is all I'm saying. 
But, but, this doctor did so. And um, hopefully, I mean, hopefully they get him his money back. I mean, that's a lot of money to run away with. Duping someone. And they're doing it. And, you know, maybe when the doctor gets over this, maybe someone can sell him some beachfront property in Arizona. I mean, you know, he's apparently willing to spend money. See, you can make a lot of money during a pandemic. Just sell Aladdin lamps. (laughs) So, um, anyway, doctor, uh, you're a wombat. Did I? Yeah, Dr. Lee Khan. Dr. Khan, you're, you're the wombat this week. So while you're waiting to get your quarter of a million dollars back, you can wear this free virtual crown upon your head. All right, and you know, uh, think twice before you buy stuff from people. <sighs> Tantrics. All right, moving along. But first, I take a drink of my tea. Ah, <sighs> okay. <clears throat> so um, similar. And to the one by the week, you can also participate in our next segment, which is Honor Thy Hero, is a very popular segment here among listeners on the show. And basically what we do is we comb the internet for news stories of uh, everyday people doing extraordinary things for other people. It is a tad more difficult to find these types of people than it is Wombats of the Week. We unfortunately, I don't think we have, well, we may actually have more stupid people in the world doing stupid things than we have heroes. So that probably is true. But what is definitely true is the media coverage of people doing great things for other people is far lower than all the other BS that they can be reported on. And that's why I need you. That's why participation in this segment from the audience is more so important than a wombat. I can find a wombat of the week in 21 seconds or less. What's more difficult to find is news stories of people doing great things. But see, you guys out there listening are in a position where you have these hometown newspapers and these weekly newspapers, and these are the types of places where we find pockets of amazing people. And so that's what we need from you. So we want to talk about um, Kingwood Park High School. Okay. And I, you know, this, this story sat and I, this was the story last week and I've reached out to them on Facebook and let them know, hey. You guys are being honored on the show. Okay. Kingwood Park High School in Houston, Texas, in the Houston, Texas area. They have a program called Students Helping Veterans. Okay. And so here's a here's a quick synopsis and we'll get into it. Students Helping Veterans, Big Heroes, Tiny Homes, is a student community, a students community collaborative project with a goal to provide student built tiny homes to homeless veterans in the Houston area. We seek to achieve this goal through partnerships with leaders in our community. The Kingwood Park Tiny Homes Project has already completed two tiny homes, the first ever seen by lead architect Sarah Dalby and the second by lead architect Brendan Flahert. We are continuing the tiny homes mission and beginning our third tiny home in the fall of 2020. Now, I'll tell you what's amazing about this. First of all, it's amazing, period. But uh, some years ago, I wrote an op-ed online about homelessness in America. And one of the things I targeted was the fact that we have a high percentage, disgustingly high percentage of homeless veterans in this country. You know, the United States is the only country I'm aware of, I'm aware of, okay, insert, I'm aware of, that does not make sure that the veterans are taken fully care of. Okay, we honor them. Sure, we have holidays for them for them to remind us that we should be good to the veterans. Yeah, these are these are great, but I'm talking every day and every situation. 
And so I did an op-ed on how you could take these used containers that you see on container ships and nobody wants or uses or sells off real cheap and turn them into tiny houses and uh, make them green, make them self-sufficient and help not only the homeless people, but also the homeless veterans. Let's get these homeless people off the streets and into something solid where they can get some sort of start, some sort of ground to start on to get their feet up and running. So when I saw this, I was amazed by it for many reasons, including that. So so this group, and I printed off so many pages about the group, and one of them was, oh, I don't even see the actual, what is the actual? Um, I had the actual story, and I don't know where it went, of the most recent tiny home. But that doesn't matter. Listen, they've done two already. They're starting their third now. So imagine, if you will, right, that you go, you go through high school, and one of your electives had something to do with this project, and now you're involved in this. You know, so not only are you doing exceptional great things for a vet or for veterans, but the learning you get, actually, you know, uh, building and construction and, you know, maybe electrical and all these things that you're being exposed to by working these projects, you know, to make sure that they are are given back. Um, so... The project started in 2018 and 2019, okay, and it includes fundraising, uh, publicity, public speaking, um, you know, working uh, to earn scholarships for college. Like, there's so many things built into this program, externally and internally. So, if you're on this project, you're earning credits, you're earning scholarships, to move on to college. And from the exterior side, they're getting out there and they're talking to community leaders to get involved, you know, monetarily and otherwise. So, like, it's almost like when I wrote this article back in 14 or 15, it's almost like somebody read it, (laughs) right, and ran with it down there in the Houston area, which I think is amazing. I mean, there's other there's other places, and we reported on other cities that are starting to do things like this, making tiny homes for the homeless. You know, but you know, down here in the Houston area, you know, they're doing it for veterans, students helping veterans, big heroes, tiny homes, and it's just an amazing way for students to gain skills. And community to give back to the people that gave the ultimate sacrifice. For people who signed that blank check, not for two years or four years, but for the rest of their lives, to defend against enemies both domestic and afar. You know, these are the ones that especially should be treated with the utmost respect. And they're doing this with this project. And you know, the other thing is, it is that really I find amazing is when I can sit here and say that these are kids doing this. I love when youth comes out like this. You know, because what else do we always hear in the news about bad kids this and bad kids that? And so I love it. And that's why recently we've had quite a few heroes, haven't we, on this show that are under 18 because I think it's amazing that the youth are coming out with this stuff flourishing and you know so I mean listen (laughs) I'm going to tell you something you know there are ways that you can donate to this okay there's a donation page which we're going to post I mean we post the, the honor thy heroes and we'll make sure the donation page is up because you can get involved with this somehow you can give back To a real project doing real things here for the veterans. And it's so inspiring to read and watch the videos that are available 
of what these kids are doing, what these teachers are doing, what this community has come together to do. So, I, I'm amazed by it. I want the, I want the students, I want the teachers, I want the faculty, I want the people in the community, I want everybody involved in this project to know that I am in, just amazed by the Students Helping Veterans program. And the program, as well as Kingwood Park High School, all have the distinction this week of being the Honor Thy Heroes recipients on the Joel Mahalik Show, featuring the lovely Sharon. Please continue your work. I'm going to put it out there for my listeners to see and be able to visit the pages, and see, you know, the YouTubes, the donation page, and help you help our veterans. And I thank you for the service you're doing to the community and to the veterans. And please keep up the great work. Thank you very much. There's your Honor Thy Heroes recipient. Uh, please make sure you get your stories in so they can be considered um, to be on Honor Thy Heroes. Everyday people doing extraordinary things. That's what it's all about. That gives me slightly a couple quick minutes for one last thing, so I'll try to make it quick. Uh, we are going to be coming into the Christmas season soon, uh, I, and I'm a horror fanatic. I love my horror movies, I lo- and I love horror Christmas movies. Uh, yes, it's a thing. If you did not know, it's a thing. But there's one this year that I don't know if I should be intrigued or if I should run the other way, and it's called Santa Jaws. That's right, a Christmas horror movie about a killer shark wearing a Santa hat. And I am not kidding with you. Okay, so... uh, According to IMDb, the official synopsis of the movie reads, Cody is an aspiring comic book artist who happens to be gifted a pen which changes reality. At first, as he first draws, Santa Jaws making it come to life as Cody's family and friends are picked off. First, no one believes him, but soon his remaining family and friends find out it's true and race to battle for survival. Who will win? I mean, I don't know what to think about this. And it sits at a 52% rating at Rotten Tomatoes. 3.7 out of 10 at IMDb. That's a pretty big swing. That really is. Because my rule of thumb is, hey, if it's 5 or over out of 10, it's probably worth looking at, right? And Rotten Tomatoes says it is. And Rotten Tomatoes has a simple synopsis. Trying to survive the family Christmas, Cody makes a wish to be alone, which ends up backfiring when a shark manifests and kills his entire family. Short and sweet, and 52% critics rating at Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, I don't know. Someone on Rotten Tomatoes says, a fairly decent horror comedy with a hilarious sense of humor about itself. So I don't know about what I'm going to do about this. Will I watch it? I don't know. Seems awfully strange. What do you think? Anyway, that brings us to the end of the show. That is one last thing. I want to thank everybody for listening to the program. Remember, we can be found at www.jmtalk.net. On TikTok and Facebook, we're JM Talk. On Instagram and Twitter, JM Talk Radio. So remember, uh, I want everybody to be kind to one one another. Please, parents, pay attention to what your kids may or may not be doing. And make sure they're not bullying other people. Kindness is king. And on behalf of the lovely Sharon and myself, we want to say thanks for listening. We'll catch you next week, folks, on a brand new episode. Goodbye. (laughs) 